We are John and Ellie, the Barefoot Doctors. We lost our new Leopard 50 catamaran to fire, so we began our search for the perfect performance catamaran for sailing us around the world. Jump on board for this adventure, and together, who knows what we can achieve? Because <laughs> life is better barefoot. Hello everyone, this is Ellie, still in Australia, but only about five weeks until John and I are back on Expedition Barefoot once again. But for now, let's kick off our shoes and watch more adventures on Sea Essentials with John, Paul, Mark, Sonia and Neil's awesome 8,000 nautical miles Atlantic crossing. Okay, so we're doing a little experiment today. Paul is saying that's a double reefed main will make us go faster than a single reef main because it's a better shape so we are going to test that theory out today and we're just starting to take off the preventers we'll have to go up into the wind to reef or to pull the second reef down so there you can see the sail just below the shrouds where it's attached at the top and we'll come down probably the same distance again to put in the second reef so here are the steps to change from a first reef main to a second reef main. First remove all the preventers on the boom, then tighten the main sheet and centralize the traveler. This stabilizes the boom and makes it safe to work on the top deck. Take any snubbers or barber holders off the Genoa and then roll it in using a furler. The main halyard will have to roll out so free that up and the second reef line will need to be around the winch because that will be tightened in. The first reef line can be left alone as it will become slack as the second reef is tightened. So all the lines have been prepared in the steering station to do the reefing, so the main halyard ready to drop and the second reefing line ready to tighten in. When heading into the wind to reef or man manipulate the sails, we put the auto helm on performance and wind vane at zero degrees so the boat motors directly into the wind. Now you drop the main halyard Gradually, as you tighten in the second reef line, you are aiming to get the hook at the front of the sail close to the boom and the pulley at the rear of the sail about two foot from the boom. Once the reef line is tight, then you can haul up the halyard to create a little bit of tension on the luff. You always have to pay attention when reefing the main that there are no tangles on the halyard or on the reef lines. The sail can get twisted and in our case here, the sail actually fell out of the boom bag. So we had to tidy it up, which is why it's so important to have the boom stabilized and central in order to make working up here safe. The other delay we had was this attachment of the second reef line was situated here. So it was applying pressure on the main sheet and that would obviously cause a lot of friction and wear and tear. So we slackened off the second reef, pulled it forward, and now the pulley points straight down to the reef one there and then pulls to the back of the boom over there. Now we're bearing away and gonna go back on course. That did take a bit of work to get the boom bag, the sail packed neatly, neat-ish in the boom bag. So you can use the wind power to get a traveler over and pull in the slack on this side while you can. Yeah, let it go. It's quite a long way. Then it will take one loop off, I'll just do two loops. Okay, that's enough. Okay. Oh, well, it's just touching. So guys, there's the end result, second reef main. And you can see it's the top of the sail is kind of probably a meter and a half or two meters above the spreader now. It was before the first uh, reef, it was just below the shrouds up there. Now it's down there. The sail is reasonably well packed in the bag. We've tied it up the ropes, nicely coiled on the mast. The three preventers are on again and the um, sail is not touching the shrouds except with uh, just a, a single touch at the full extent of a uh, billow if you like. Okay we're trimming the Genoa to try and make the sail parallel with the main so the air flows through the slot and that's a, a sailing, it is a sailing term, they talk about the slot. Uh, you can see the the cell just touching the shroud, the full extent of, of, of dust and a bulge. There, it just touches. He's using that 
the rolling uh, truckers hitch to have a bit of leverage to pull or loosen the, the sling line is what he calls it. Now it's time to see what the speeds are like compared to what we it was like before. So that will be very interesting. We averaged 7.5 knots for the last four hours under the previous setup. And assuming the wind stays at the same speed, we'll have to see if we get more than that under this setup. Paul's reputation is at risk. Oh, <laughs> sure it is. Are you guys... feeling under pressure, Paul? What pressure? <laughs> I don't feel the pressure. <laughs> Just ask Neil to let the general I'll let the general out again, thanks. So here you see the initial speeds are around 7 or 7.2 knots in 14 or 15 knots of wind. Unfortunately the wind then faded a bit, so obviously the speeds then started to fall. Here in 13 knots of wind we're doing 6.7 knots, so it seems we were doing similar speeds to before, but certainly not higher speeds. It's always really hard to judge when the wind speeds vary, and here I think we have to say that the verdict is still not decided. So this is yeah. bread. Okay. Yep. We're gonna make some lovely bread. Flour, yeast, salt. I'm actually and sugar. And sugar. 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 I like this. Ready, set, cook. <laughs> British. Table salt. No, I tried for Irish, but the closest we could get was British. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, no ultimate, the ultimate enemy. <laughs> no, they're, they're nice chaps. Mm. They're not kidding us. Yeah, King Charles. <laughs> King Charles, that one. Be difficult. Yeah. It's a good South African tradition. Then it is. Rusts, lunch, and coffee. Mm -hmm. mm. The rest of it. I got it. <laughs> I got the one on fingers. I got it. But you definitely need to dunk it. You do. Yep. Otherwise, I was saying it's a bit of a tooth tipper. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's quite delicious. Yeah, so, nice. Yeah. yeah. So this is a very technical procedure here. What do we have? So this is you uh, putting air, filling it with air and... That's it. Ah, boom. Oh, nice. So this is how to make bread on a passage, is it? Paul's plastic bag procedure. <laughs> do other people do this or was this your invention? No, I've learned it from other people. Okay. Mm. We'll be ready. Okay, and then in the oven for how long? 45 minutes as well, so 10 minutes before. So in 35 minutes time, we switch the oven on to 185. We put that in and it's ready in 45 minutes okay. in the oven as well. Right. And before we put it in the oven, we actually spray a little bit of water on oh, yeah. it to make it nice and crispy. And no kneading? You don't do any kneading? I with... absolutely needed it until oh. it was no longer sticky and so on, so I most certainly needed it. That, that took about 10-15 minutes or so? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. You guys haven't moved. I moved. Just, oh, just different, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Oh, it's just like that. Yeah. You're looking for moisture. Yeah. That's good. That's good. There we go. Okay, it's a beginner's bread. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is that my bark garden? So the lush's been taken out of the pan into turned upside down to air. It smells fantastic actually. My goodness. Baking bread just smells divine. Oh no, no, that's bread. absolutely <laughs> it's not it's not a work of art, but uh, I think that's very creatively made a top, <laughs> but it's very artistic actually. Yeah, it's got the... I tried to duplicate a St. Helena volcanic eruption. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> In the cupboard at the bottom there, I'm going to get some. Yeah. Mm. Look at that. Which I should be to perfection. Open? Yeast, kneading, all of those important things that make... Right. Lovely. Congratulations, what is it? Yeah, modified chicken Caesar salad with some bacon. We don't have everything on the boat. But <laughs> <laughs> so but we salad. make do. It's chicken it's salad. Made, it's like Hell's Kitchen where the amount of ingredients at the start was like, oh, we can make anything. And then slowly, day by day, we got a bit more creative. <laughs> okay, guys, so this is the sunset time of day 10 
we are sailing along with a second reef main full Genoa the winds about fluctuating between 12 knots and about 15 knots and the seas uh, were like about two meters and they forecast to be up again at two meters but at the moment they're quite flat and it's actually quite peaceful um, I'm just going to show you around the boat because now the wind noise might get a little oh we look like we're going to get some rain squalls the benefit with having this the double reef main is when this sort of thing happens when a, if a squall comes along this double reef main will be easily easy to handle it can handle winds of up to 40 knots so that's fine uh, so we don't have to worry too much and if we need to roll in the Genoa we can do that too very easily from the steering position so the advantage with having this rig is it's very flexible and we can cope with you know horrible little blasts of wind if that's to happen the risk with a rain squall is sometimes or often it's associated with a big blast of wind sometimes it's not but um, we'll just have to wait and see hatches would need to be closed that's probably the only thing as you might just close these hatches I see this is my that he's uh, I'll just open the radar up, see what's visible. In terms of weather systems or storms, it's not too bad. Like you're really more worried. This is actually quite a magnified version. These rings are one mile apart. So those little dots are actually very small little cloud collections. Whereas if it was a big storm with a significant uh, content to it, it would be a big splodge with much more intense color. So that's pretty, pretty mild. I think these are just rain clouds rather than actual significant storms still not quite six o'clock on our clocks uh, we set our times back two hours when we were outside of Cape Town the aim of that was to get the Sun rising and setting about six o'clock 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. so that it's kind of the right sort of hours for our daily rhythms and it really doesn't matter that St. Helena is a different time although we do have to remember that when we check in on Saturday hopefully that we are probably an hour out from what their time would be okay checking out and waiting to see if these rain clouds in that direction are gonna pack any punch or are they gonna suck the wind out of the air age-old expression we will see also I suppose also we will cope with whatever it happens to bring and I think that's the important thing it doesn't matter what will happen but we will manage it and we have strategies for each eventuality. So we are in about 15, 13 to 15 knots of wind. We've been sailing under the Genoa and Reef Main, but we're now going to put up the Oxley to get a bit more speed heading towards St. Helena. Making sure that there's no twist if it's a two to one pulley and then hoist the sock with the sail inside keeping the red strip on the port side then you need to pump up the snuffering and we use a bowline with two loops you ensure there are no twists in the sail by running your hand along the foot of the sail between the clue and the tack Here is the yellow line taking the strain of the sheet. Um, instead of having that sheet running all the way back up there and then up here. And the reason for that is because this gets a little bit of chafe as it runs over this corner. It's coming up very low there and it rubs against there and there was already a bit of chafe happening on this sheet just there. So he's taking the pressure off to avoid damaging that rope right there. And that's done taking the weight forward at that yeah, point and when we have to undo it 
we have to tighten in the sheet to take the strain off the yellow rope and then just undo the knot easily. So here we have the Oxley sailing in its full glory. Amazing. And there we go, following winds and seas. And flying fish. <laughs> because, because of the direction and the ability to change now and go straight for St. Helena, we're at one day and four hours. So we'd arrive Saturday. We might just we might just still make it, you know? We have about 160 miles to go to St. Helena. Um, this is about a 15 knot wind. We have the parasailer up. We put it up just after dawn and we are doing fairly consistent speeds of about seven knots, sometimes eight. When the wind gets up to 15, seven is when it's kind of 12 or 13 knots. So probably about half the true wind speed and you can see out here it's a fairly grey day little gaps in the clouds but um, probably more cloud than than blue sky so the nice thing though is sailing along with the Oxley and making good speed on Autohelm people are mostly inside all the time and it's a lovely smooth day a bit of swell but not as much swell now as there was uh, last night last night the wind was very fluky we had winds of um, like 12 knots some of the time but there were other times when it dropped down to about like eight knots and in eight knots in a two meter swell the sails were flogging the wind out of them so that is a pain in the bum but now the wind's picked up and we've got the Oxley up and we're making good speed again. We are not going to make it to St. Helena by the time, by Saturday morning. Uh, so we're going to miss the immigration people. So we're going to be there till Monday on the boat and then we'll check in on Monday. A little bit of a shame, but uh, we've got plenty of stuff to do on the boat. It just means a couple of days delay before we can depart again. So, because we do, we got, seeing as we're at St. Helena, we're not going to miss out St. Helena. We're not just going to and go on and miss all of that uh, interesting stuff. St. Helena sounds like a lovely place and we do want to see the 195 year old turtles that's the oldest living creature in the world his name being Jonathan. Actually one of the good things is even though um, the sun is not out as in there are clouds there's enough glare for whatever the brand of um, solar panels we've got here the solar panels even with this amount of shade we're still uh, putting charge into the batteries more than we're using so that's a pretty good sign so that's that's great and I smell really really nice coffee being made at the moment and I'm just going to show you the water out the front so let's get a bit of a few little cinematic pictures for you to you to enjoy what it's like being on a boat Thanks for watching guys and if you like what we do, show us the love and hit the like button, then hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on your regular fix. Then kick off your shoes and you can come barefoot with us.